Mary Hicks has always had a competitive side in her. And at 77 years old, she's still set on winning. I need to practice some more. But now, her battles are different than they were back in her college basketball days. Four months ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I said, oh no, it's not any time to do any crying. We got to go to work now. Uh, let's see, how are we going to fix this thing? This grandmother's gung-ho attitude stems back to her childhood. I was born in Macon, Georgia, and, and, and grew up there. I went to college after, um, after high school, got a basketball scholarship, and attended Savannah State. And I had a, a math major, and I had taught for 40 years. I wanted to go into math for number one. I looked around, it wasn't any female math teachers. They were very, very limited. And I said, oh, this thing needs to change. So that was my motivator, just, the, just observing women um, not going in this field because they were discouraged not to go in there. That was number one. They, they, we were told we were supposed to um, stay in the kitchen, in the home, and do the housework. So I said, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. So I decided that, all right. It is now time for me to make the change. And that's why I think that we see so many more female doctors, uh, engineers, and in all of these other fields that, that's out. It came from my generation and the stand we took during that time. I look back when I walk into the doctor's office now, uh, sometimes I tell them, wow, I'm proud to see you here. Because <laughs> at one time I'd walk in there, all I saw was no offense, guys, but all I saw was male doctors. Sometimes now, I met Lone Melinda for lunch, and uh, a couple of them will walk in. They say, oh, aren't you Mrs. Hicks? And they go back and tell me of uh, being in my classroom and how I had uh, encouraged them to go into the field that they were going into. I say, oh, you were listening. About a week after Mary's diagnosis at Loma Linda, Doctors performed surgery to remove the tumor. When I went back for the um, consultation on the lumpectomy, uh, she was rather, rather pleased with what she saw. And they had, she said they had got it all that, that she could see. But uh, the human eye cannot tell the difference in the normal cells from the abnormal cells. So to make sure they got them all, they need to do radiation. Chemotherapy wouldn't be needed because I, it hadn't spread it beyond the margin. I learned that I had a choice between the proton and the, the standard radiation. When they do proton radiation, because it's targeted to just the area where the lumpectomy was performed, first of all, it spares the rest of the breast, and secondly, it takes only 10 days instead of five to seven weeks. At Loma Linda University Medical Center, Doctors are in a clinical trial on proton treatment for breast cancer. Dr. Bush and his colleagues were asking the question, can we use proton to lower the risk of side effects but still have excellent results in having the cancer not come back? And the original parts of the study showed exactly that. Very low side effects, very, very low recurrence. In fact, better than other studies had shown with conventional radiation. Standard radiation that's available at pretty much all radiation centers would be treatment with what we call photons or x-ray treatment. And the difference between kind of regular radiation or photons and proton radiation is that x-rays or photons tend to go all the way through, meaning that there's no stopping to the beam. So when you aim that beam at the patient, it penetrates from skin to skin, in one side, out the other. Uh, what protons will do is they will penetrate to a certain depth and then stop. And the majority of the energy deposited happens just before the beam stops. And we can control where that stopping happens. We can make the beam go to a certain depth and stop, uh, thus making the dose of radiation actually get deposited where we want it to, uh, instead of, kind of traveling all the way through the body. And I said, well, okay, I'll take the proton. 
Step one of proton treatment, getting fitted with a breast cup. Step two, creating a custom made mold of her body called a pod. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. So you're gonna get up on here, okay? Good thing I went to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> You're mobile, that's what we like. She's very, very limber. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to uh, slide you over here a little bit, and then we can access both sides, and we're going to mix up this two-part foam over here. You'll hear the blender mixing, um, and it's just expanding foam, and we're going to pour it in, and then we're going to wait a few minutes. We're going to feel it rise up around you. And then once it uh, hardens up, it's going to solidify, we'll just tape it down, and that'll be your device. This will help Mary remain still during treatment, so the proton beams hit the tumor in the same exact location during each session. It won't get on you, we promise. We haven't glued anybody in a pod yet. So, yep, slowly rising up, so once it gets to the edge, then we'll tape it down. You enjoying it? Yeah. All right, all right, that's what we like to hear. It's very comfortable, so it's not too hot. It's, it's like just right. An electric blanket? Well, it feels more cozy. <laughs> yeah, okay. After 15 minutes, her pod is created. Check it out. It's yours. Wow. <laughs> so, custom made for home. Oh, no. Step three. A CT scan is taken to determine the best path for the proton beam to travel. From these images, a device called an aperture is then constructed to form the shape of the beam. During the next couple days, the team designs her customized treatment plan. Mary is now ready to enter the gantry. The gantry is just rotating around to your side. We're going to start on your left side, okay? First, the proton team takes x-rays to make sure Mary is lined up in perfect position for the proton beam. Once we get you lined up properly, everything's where it should be. We're going to load up those that nozzle with your beam shaping devices. The ones that were made just for you and for the field that we're going to treat. You have an aperture and a bolus, a metal aperture which shapes the area, and then the bolus which helps control the contour of the beam, or the depth of the beam. This was some pleasant trip. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel stress, pressure. It was Relaxing. After 10 short days of proton therapy, Mary's cancer treatment is complete. So it was just like a, a regular routine, and it also worked right into my exercise and plan. So, it, you know, I didn't feel like I was doing anything different. When I talked to the doctor, she said, you are already cancer free. I said, oh, thanks very much. I'm gonna relax, it's gone. And so let me get continue on with my life. My days are full of activities. I'm, I'm never bored. It's, it's, it's a beautiful life. <laughs>